My name's Ursula Durrani. I'm a lymphoma physician at Mayo Clinic, and we're here at the Oncology Brothers event here at ASH 2025. I'm here with Dr. Josh Brody from Mount Sinai, um, and excited to ask you some questions and, and see what your thoughts are on all the data from ASH 2025. I'm super nervous. I hope the questions are not too hard. They are not. I can promise you that. So I think one thing on everybody's mind, I think the abstract that's on the top of every lymphoma doctor's mind at ASH 2025 is the EPCOR FL1 phase three data comparing EPCOR R squared, EPCOR R squared versus R squared in relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma. Yep. Want to get your initial thoughts and then maybe some follow-up questions. Uh very excited to get all this data from Dr. Felkin, a publication also, you know, kind of concurrently. Uh, the, the abstract, the result is super exciting, but like in some ways super boring because it is totally, I would say, exactly expected. Uh, it is a super blowout in efficacy. Mm -hmm. uh, R squared is good, but not great. It's probably a little worse than it was when we kind of discovered it a few years ago. And, uh, and EPCOR R squared in efficacy I mean, the hazard ratio is gigantic. Maybe one of the biggest hazard ratios we've ever seen in these randomized trials. Uh, we do not even know what the PFS will be, but it will be years, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a lot better than R-squared. Um, and in terms of safety, it's pretty good. Most of the toxicity is just R-squared toxicity, but it does add a little something. You you, you got to pay something for what you get. So there's a little bit more uh, neutropenia, a little bit more infection. Mm -hmm. Those are toxicities. Docs, I think community docs are very comfortable with those, even though they're not great. At least they're something that we know uh, well. And then this whole CRS cytokine release syndrome thing is it's not nothing, but it's 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 almost nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, it is almost all grade one, a little bit of grade two, basically zero percent grade three. We could off be off by one percentage, but uh, you know, it is outpatient therapy. And community oncologists, I think they're already a little comfortable with follicular lymphoma by specifics, because no hospitalization required. So I think they'll be pretty comfortable with this. And if they're not, the way to get comfortable is just do it once. And I'm almost certain you will then be comfortable after that. So great trial, great results. Absolutely. I think I agree with you. You know, the safety profile seems, yes, there's a higher risk of infection, higher risk of cytopenias, fairly manageable for most community oncologists and academic institutions. The question is, the calculus is very different for follicular lymphoma, sure. right? We're talking about an incurable disease that many people live with for many years. And so the question is, who are you going to choose this sort of escalation of therapy in? Who is the right candidate for a triplet therapy versus, you know, who's to say that sequential therapy might be just as good for that patient? I'm just meeting you. You seem real nice and super smart. And also your outfit is uh, super cute. Nonetheless, I'm going to push back on something that you said. You said this is an incurable disease. This is a historically incurable yeah. disease. Yeah. This disease has been incurable with the therapies we've used yeah. from the beginning of time up through 2024, 20, 5, whatever. No disease is incurable. Every disease is curable. Don't blame the disease. Blame us. It's on us. We got to find the cure. And, you know, when my grandpa's sister got Hodgkin's in 1947. They, it's called incurable disease. Now we call it 85. But the Hodgkin's hasn't changed. Just, you know, we got the cure. So how do we get there? We get there by getting very high CR rates and, you know, maybe MRD negativity, not a big focus for this thing. Um, and then durable CRs. That's the road to cure. Is it incurable? We might have been, we might be curing people today. And we, I won't be, we'll have to sit down here in 10 and 15 years from now and say, oh yeah, remember back in 2025, that's when we started curing people. So anyway, but your point is a very good one. Maybe some people don't need better therapy and the unmet need in follicular lymphoma, let's not oversell it. It's not pancreas cancer, it's not lung cancer. Uh, some, patients, some patients are good with what we already have. So yes, I do not think we have to give this to every single patient, but if someone was gonna get R squared, most of the toxicity is the R squared. If someone is healthy enough for the R squared, they're probably healthy enough for the triplet. You know, the, the, the last, most effective ingredient, I think, adds the least, well, sorry, the rituximab is pretty well tolerated, but it adds, you know, a lesser bit of the toxicity. So uh, here's a quick answer to your question. If someone got our bend of front line and they had a nine-year remission and now they're 84 years old, you can give them something gentler instead. Um, and, you know, everyone who's 60 years old and we want to get them to be 100, I think this is the path to that. So I am not always a more is better guy, absolutely. In some other indolent states, give less, absolutely. In this state, I think more may be better for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you. I think I do think that there we are seeing now with long term data of follicular lymphoma patients, 15 year, 20 year data, that there are some patients who are 
effectively cured with this supposedly incurable disease. So your point is definitely well taken. With regards to the safety profile, there was a significantly increased risk of infections, even over R squared when yep. you had added yep. the EPCO. What would be your approach to managing that? Is there any role for using IVIG in these patients who are having low, you know, gamma globulins? There did seem to be a correlation between, you know, IgG levels less than 400 and risk of infection in the studies too. Yeah. Really, we've already been using these triplets for some years now, so we have opinions about it. We don't know the right answers, but we have opinions. I mean, let me say first, if you did not get some other therapy right before this next line of therapy, first, yeah, please go get your flu vaccine. Please go get your RSV vaccine, probably get your pneumonia vaccine, et cetera, et cetera. I hope that's not a controversial thing to say now. I'm, I think we saw recent data that vaccines cause pregnancy. Or so. I don't remember the specifics, but the point is, please, please, please do the things we know prevent those infections. Um, and then. Yeah, we monitor immunoglobulin IgG levels. Um, you know, they don't drop. It's not like with some BCMA bispecifics. I'm not an expert in myeloma, but I know, you know, they get more hypogammaglobulinemia. Um, and we get some patients that get hypogammaglobulinemia in six months. And some people we've had on these medicines for years, and they're still, you know, IgG 900. But we should monitor it. The frequency of monitoring depends on where your baseline is. If you're starting at 600, yeah, monitor it monthly or something. And yeah, for 400s and any whisper of an infection, 400 and a wh or sorry, under 400. Yeah, we give IVIG, a bit of a hassle once a month, but we have also sub-Q IG. Patients take it home right next to their Ozempic. They give themselves their sub-Q IG and probably some other medicines that they're also taking. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty safe. Um, get your vaccines, monitor IG. Some people might need some prophylactic so in the very beginning, when there's a little more steroid as well, there might be some people you want to give prophylactic, you know, Bactrim, uh, PJP prophylaxis in the first month or so when there's a little bit more steroid. So that's a possibility, but not for most people. So mostly it is about vaccines, monitoring IgG. Yep, yep, yep. Well, Dr. Brody, this has been fantastic to hear all your thoughts on uh, the EPCOR study. And I think we're in an exciting time for follicular lymphoma. And maybe in 10 years, we'll talk about cured follicular lymphoma. So thank you. Honestly, I have an outfit already picked out. So I, I've been Thanks. looking forward to it. And let, let me just say again, the shoes are also super cute. They all work with the whole thing. Very patriotic. Beautiful. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.